So the next step is I'm going to get uh, some more reference here, another texture opened up, and I'm going to use this to add some kind of uh, dirt slash dust to the bottom of the cement pad. Um, just will ground it a bit better. So I'm just going to make sure that this is uh, tileable, uh, and that way I, uh, to do that I just use the, um, uh, I just use Photoshop to uh, to check it out to move it along and uh, then I just clone it or use the uh, the band-aid tool so I'm just going to take the little chunk of the bottom there <coughs> bring it in rotate it around and uh, scale it down no problem snapping it there Control T is your transform to uh, snap it when you rotate and hold down shift. There we go. It's, uh, it's pretty good size. Let's change it to uh, just find a good uh, layer uh, layer type. Desaturate, hit multiply, color dodge. Soft light seems to work the best. Get out the eraser. Erase out uh, what I don't want using 100%. And then uh, enlarging, enlarging the brush. Enlarge the brush, I mean. Uh, drop it down to about 25% and just erase uh, some more so it blends in. Erase here and there because it wouldn't be the same height and same opacity going all the way across. Dirt just doesn't do that. That's a good thing, you know, when you're out and about, look, uh, check out where dust collects on things and how it lays uh, on an object and uh, you'll just, uh, you'll get the hang of it, you'll just start noticing things um, a little more and uh, they'll start looking better, your textures will start looking better. I'm constantly looking at things now and, uh, and I'm amazed at what I thought, uh, what I thought I knew you know, in your head, you, you, you picture, picture things and you think you picture it right, but a lot of the times you don't. So it's always best to, uh, to get reference, whether it's uh, real time, you just go out to the street and look or whatnot, or Google it, etc. So I'm just doing the same thing on that side and uh, realizing I got some uh, pieces left over here, some stragglers. So I'll just mark here around it, delete. Again, grab that chunk, bring it in, add it to the pieces that are uh, left to do, marquee out chunks I don't need, erase down, again one more time, I'll just actually uh, duplicate one layer and flip it. I'm just checking to make sure I'm lining it up on the, the right edge. Again, the erase tool. <laughs> make it unique. more, duplicate, rotate, flip it horizontal, line her up, erase all that uh, extra stuff, and there we go, we have a nice little uh, dust layer, combine them all, notice how to miss some chunks to delete. I'll just take the eraser, just erase out some more make it a little more unique. I'm sorry, I apologize for the sniffling. I'm uh, a little under the weather right now. That's what happens when you work in the studio. You uh, you catch other people's colts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, uh, the TV image. 
my favorite band's Weezer, so I'll just use a little promotional shot of theirs. You can do whatever you want in this, you know. I know this isn't very uh, realistic, but hell, it's my object. I can do what I want. Um, but uh, some studios, like, I mean, this would, um, some of these things actually do have moving video on them, so uh, if your engine can handle it, and most can, you uh, you can add a little, uh, blip, uh, little bink video uh, to this object. Nice little effect. So I'm just using um, these photo filters. Just blurring it out a bit. Just kind of making it look like the screen's kind of like a plastic uh, LCD and it's been kind of damaged and <coughs> maybe some condensation has gotten in the back there. We're going to overlay this little uh, horizontal pattern. I'm going to just fill a layer and it creates that uh, that screen look. Just adjusting the levels here. Don't want too much contrast. Don't want to be black and white. <coughs> Adjusted the grunge on it. That's pretty good. There we go. There's that little uh, layer I put over top to uh, give it that uh, LCD kind of look, monitor to look. So I'm just uh, got the grunge on it again. I'm just gonna go in, pick a couple brushes, <laughs> erase out some, and I'm gonna add. Uh, I'm gonna add some more grunge to overall uh, to give it kind of like you know uh, it's more of an authentic look where you know maybe somebody's thrown a, a drink against it or something spilt been uh, sprayed on it uh, waters dripped down uh, just some overall dirt so just uh, picking a brush adjusting it in the brush attributes A lot of it's trial and error when you're doing texturing. Oh, hell, when you're doing anything to do with art, you know, especially digital. Uh, digital allows you to. Uh, you don't have to uh, cry every time you make a mistake. Uh, Control Z is a great thing when you can undo. So it, it allows you to uh, try a bunch of different things, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, you haven't wasted uh, too much time. You just start over. So I'm just uh, trying out different brushes here. Um, see what happens. Uh, I've got them on different layers so I can uh, erase and get rid of it. Another good thing is um, to get a collection of uh, different types of brushes that, uh, that you can use. There's a uh, huge huge amount of them available on the internet uh, for free too so racing out a bit here Nice little brush here that I can do something with. Excuse me. So like I said, you know, I'm just trying different things here. Because <coughs> you never know. And then, you know, you know, once you fi do find a nice brush that adds like uh, something cool, you, you then know that that you can use that one in the future. Um, you can also make, you know, individual brush set, brush sets too when you uh, find something you like. So again, just adding uh, adding some details. Going to add a little bit of a kind of a pukey brown color to this, like a coffee stain. Maybe some you know some punk 
kid to copy gets it or something like that. This television screen has certainly seen its better days, that's for sure. There we go, you know, that it's, uh, it's got some nice grunge to it. I'm just finding the right uh, layer style there, drop the opacity. That's pretty good, I kind of dig it. Let's erase a bit more out there. Style and drop the opacity. It's giving it kind of a layered effect by uh, duplicating and erasing a bit more on top. <coughs> Again, you know, you might do something and then later on go back to it and not quite like it as much once you uh, do more work to it. So you can always uh, adjust, uh, go back and adjust things like I'm doing here with the uh, with the grunge. trying something here, give it a bit of a motion blur, like it's kind of been caught in like a, it's frozen in like a flicker. <coughs> that it's, you know, it's been kind of skipping. Something's wrong with the TV, it's been skipping and it's just frozen. Yeah, not really digging this. So I'll probably, I don't know, I'm thinking it's probably not the best thing. So I'll just undo it, put it back, <laughs> excuse me, to the original. And it's going to squash it a bit like it, uh, like the, the screen's starting to lose its, uh, Start mess up basically, so that maybe the image isn't filling the entire thing anymore. So now what I'm going to do is just basically use my ambient occlusion and make a, a mask. Uh, use that as a mask so I can just put dirt in quickly. So you just want to um, basically colorize it, make a copy of it, colorize it with red. <coughs> this is a nice solid primary red and control U and uh, you hit uh, uh, colorize and if you want to get rid of uh, you know maybe add more red or take away more uh, red you, um, you don't erase like I did there by accident you actually just paint it out using white or obviously red if you want to allow more more things to shine through so I'm just uh editing it myself <laughs> don't really like how the uh, um, ambient inclusion uh, worked out here I'm just making a selection using my uh, using my uh, my normal map this wand selecting I don't want it exactly perfect um, because it just, again, adds a level of authenticity to it. Um, so let's quickly want to select everything in here. Change the settings, so get a better uh, result that I was looking for. And I'll, I'll just, uh, once I get this into the mask, I'll just Paint it out with a bit of white so not as much dirt shows up on this part as it will on the section of metal behind it. <laughs> the deeper recesses. So as you can tell, I'm uh, still just selecting here. I'm hitting some things when I, with, with the wand tool that, that I shouldn't be. So it's giving me a, a bad uh, selection. So 
I'm just locked in away here still. <laughs> see I've got the one selection I'm just painting it out adding a bit more white to these so that not as much dirt will uh, will show through I'm doing it to the other selection <coughs> Racing out things on the sign, you know, dirt wouldn't be that consistent right across. So I've got my, uh, just a couple dirt maps here, general dirt, that I'll use. They're kind of saturated, so I just uh, adjust them. And what you do is you just lay it over top, and in between the layers of this layer, 32 and uh, the AO copy, You hit Alt, you click Alt in between the layers, and and uh, then what I've uh, I've noticed I've uh, made a mistake here. I um, need to select uh, the white to make this dirt map, as I'll uh, as I'll call it, as I'll refer to it. So I've just selected the the red, control I, invert, delete, and there we go. There's the uh, the mask. <coughs> so you'll take this and you'll take that dirt layer I ha have uh, added, and you hit Alt, you Alt click in between the um, the layers, and you there you go. There's the result. It's a quick way to do uh, dirt where uh, things have accumulated. Uh, you can also bake this map in in Maya too. Um, Depending on the uh, the, com the complexity of the uh, of the object, and also um, uh, you can adjust where the occlusion falls. So you know it could be uh, something that's important for the game, where this object is under something that uh, dirt would fall from the top, or you know blow from the side, or something like that. So I'm just going to go through and um, add all these clipping planes. Um, to where the mask is, and you can see a uh, nice little dirt layer is starting to uh, to form here. So just moving this this bad boy along, just uh, erasing out the edges so the tiles. Again, I do that by uh, um, making a duplicate layer and not taking it all the way so it lines up perfectly beside each other, just sliding it down, you know, say 60%, and uh, overlap it, and take a soft edge brush, uh, something that has a bit of a scatter, something a bit of a unique shape, and you just, uh, you drop the opacity down to 30, 40%, 25%, whatever, and you, uh, you erase away, and the two layers blend in together. So this is a quick way to uh, fix the seam. So I don't like, uh, there's a little too much dirt, so I'm just going to uh, paint it out on the uh, the mask using white again. So I've got another big dirt layer here. I'm going to add it to the TV. Again, alt click. And that creates a, a clipping mask, or a clipping path, sorry. Again, these uh, these textures I'm using may look a little ridiculous when I lay them on there because it's just, it's general ground dirt I'm using. But once you uh, use this mask uh, uh, idea, you don't even notice that it's it's a ground dirt that I'm just applying on there. You just don't that it appears dirty. That's all. So it's turning out pretty good. Just uh, burning through these here.
So I'm getting near the end here. I'm just, uh, as you can tell, just uh, going through the motions, adding the dirt map, making a, a clipping path. Over. You can use the same two or three uh, if you want. You can use the same one. Uh, I'm just using different ones, uh, a, a couple different ones, just for a little variation. That's all. You can add them on top of each other. You can do whatever, uh, whatever your little heart desires. So there, I'm done that. Just saving my file. <laughs> Excuse me, what I'm going to do now is just add a little details, like a little, you know, uh, stickers, tags, things that people would have stuck on these as they're walking by. Um, this kind of stuff you have to be careful because uh, if, you're re if you're using the same, um, if something's been mapped on top of each other, you know, you don't want the same thing appearing three times or four times on an object, and it becomes quite apparent that... Uh, um, You've just duplicated the light post, for example. <coughs> you still want to have an air of uh, uniqueness. So I'm just going to add it to certain things here and there. Just different posters. I just grabbed all these off cgtextures.com. So I'm just cutting out uh, little random ones that I like. Again, just drag it in, control T, scale it down. Just cutting out this red. It's been stuck there, and it's been peeling off, and there's some uh, sticker residue still, uh, still there. So I'm just gonna use this tag quickly. Uh, lasso tool it. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can uh, adjust it when you get it into your, uh, your layer. to worry that some of it's cut off there because I mean it's a tag. Tags don't really make sense to begin with, so I mean if you're gonna do graffiti, at least get a little more creative than just tagging stuff. I'm just erasing the edges a bit to uh, get rid of that hard lasso edge that uh, I added. I'm just erasing that, and look, you know, all of a sudden, it's a small b. Drop it uh, down to the multiply uh, layer, shrink her down, stick it somewhere random, that, uh, it won't, that it won't be duplicated when uh, you see it on the model. Give it, even, it just uh, gives another layer of uniqueness to the object, uh, another bit of realism. If you've noticed, I'm kind of breaking one of my little rules here that I have about sticking uh, sticking things on things that are, multi are, are multiple in the uh, the scene. So I uh, so I moved it to avoid that. So let's copy 
read some more here. Just uh, selecting some more. See what uh, what works, what doesn't. Also make sure that you you know you put it in appropriate spots that it's not like bending around the corner, especially if it's a tag or something spray painted on, because uh, that's just not a, this wouldn't have happened like that. Let's throw that one in there. Let's see if there's any other ones I kind of like. This one's kind of cool. It's old and worn. Again, don't worry too much about. Uh, Getting it perfect. You can just erase out bits and do whatever you feel like to it to uh, to get it to where it just looks good. So I'm just going to check it in Maya here, see uh, see how it looks, see if anything uh, really sticks out, screaming that uh, things have been duplicated. <coughs> and see if the placement's right. I'm guessing on some of this stuff. So you, so you can tell that tag's a little big. That's in the bad spot. So I'll just change out those... Uh, couple things. Overall, oh, we've got some mapping that's uh, flipped around. That's easy enough. Just flip it horizontally in the uh, UV editor. There we go. Same with that one. But yeah, things are starting to look uh, look good on it. We're almost done. We're almost gotten there. We just have the uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, go over it. See if there's anything else I want to add to it. I do the uh, do the spec map on it. Just taking her into body paint now. And uh, what I'm going to do here is just going to basically uh, paint out uh, paint some scratches or where I want some scratches, like you know, where the paint is worn off down to its original. Uh, dark gray steel uh, natural color and then uh, just create a new layer within body paint just use a white paint basically I'm painting a mask that I can just then we'll take into Photoshop and use to create that uh, that look I'm hoping for <coughs> so it's just something quick you know you don't want it everywhere you want it in some spots that are logical, that things would have banged against it, uh, that in everyday use uh, would just get a lot more contact. Not so much up here, but uh, you know, there's still things that, you know, maybe birds, a scratch, or just the weather has worn it down. But you don't have to worry too much about up here. So I'm just painting these. Uh, Again, just using the standard brush, white, and going along. I have the guides on, as you can tell, it's so uh, it illuminates the edges a, a little nicer, a little easier to see. A lot more heavy duty uh, scratch and uh, wear and tear down here, because obviously it's closest to the ground. Things have bumped into it wheelchairs, bikes, shopping carts skateboards, etc.
So let's just paint these, uh, continue and paint as these uh, scratch marks, this mask. It's another good thing uh, about body paint too is that, you know, bring in your object and you can paint on it in, in, in 3D real, real time. And, uh, you know, if you're doing a character and you've you've uh, you've laid out the, the unwrap and obviously you're going to try to optimize the unwrap so things aren't going to be all stitched together and uh, if you have a design on the character like armor wise or hair or, or whatnot just bring a, bring the base model in here and you know you can paint on this in black or whatever uh, uh, the design and you take it into Photoshop and it, it's, it's there even if it's uh, spaced out across several different uh, sections of the texture you at least know that it's going to be seamless. It's a good layout tool, a good uh, texture layout tool too. But as I said before in the previous video, you can uh, uh, do the entire texture in, in body paint. It's uh, quite a neat program and on cgtoots.com there is a, a body paint tutorial that, uh, that is quite good. I uh, forget who uh, forget who did it. It was a, a young guy, so I won't go into too much detail about different things you can do in body paint and how to do them. I'm just using it for the, the most basic of uh, of of needs, <coughs> fixing seams and uh, painting out little masks. But it can do a heck of a lot more, especially for the price of it. It is a uh, another expensive program like they all are. So I'm almost down here painting in all the scratches. I'll do the uh, I'll do the cement too where the, the paint has been chipped off, flaked off. So we're almost done with this uh, with this tutorial. This texture uh, uh, after this, after I get this all done here, this mask and and discoloration of the metal, uh, I'll be doing the uh, giving it another once over. See if there's anything else I want to add to it. You know, any more you know tags or dirt or you know details I might have missed. And then uh, I'll create the spec map. Uh, add a bit more detail to the normal. It's not too much. Just uh, just a bit. And then I'll uh, show you the final uh, final render, and that'll be that'll be it. So there's you know another 15 minutes maybe. Doing a spec map is uh, when you do enough of them, it, uh, it becomes second second nature to you, and it's quite uh, go quite fast to do. Especially if you're if you've been smart and uh, have organized your PSDs uh, quite well. But we'll get to get to that in a bit. So, as you can tell, I'm just doing the same uh, the same treatment to the cement. Where it will uh, be that uh, the paint's chipped off. Because after all, it's just painted black. So I'm just saving my texture. I'm done with this now. I'll take it back into Photoshop. So there we go. There's the mask. Basically all I did was uh, use it to just desaturate it, use it to make a copy from the uh, the base color and uh, just, uh, yeah, used uh, control U, desaturated it down to and darkened it to get kind of a metal color and uh, there we go. You could have used that layer for you know numerous things, uh, another clipping path, um, any, anything along those lines. This way it was just, uh, just gave me the the result I wanted trying different things here, maybe trying to inner shadow uh, filter. Uh, don't really like it, so scrap that idea.
gives me a plus one. So, I've noticed I want to add a little more detail. I'm just taking another tag here and um, trying it out, layering this kind of stuff as you as you you see. So nothing's really working. I'm just going to erase this this out. Then we'll desaturate it. Throw it on multiply, and uh, we're good to go. <laughs> it's a pretty simple thing, and uh, to erase and it's not uh, pertinent that uh, we we do a great job of erasing it. We don't need to know that it, it says Mars. We can change it however we feel like. So I'm not taking too much uh, care with the erasing. Just doing it quickly, just so I can get the look that I want. It's quick and dirty. There we go. Let's desaturate it. Go through the layer uh, types. Find one that works. It shows maybe a, it out a bit. And there we go. Got some more tags I found. Gonna throw them around. A quick thing to uh, to do to add some uh, some nice detail. And if you get a nice one like this, which is basically black and white, you can just uh, use multiply and just erase out the edges quickly. Like I said, I'm just uh, adding some more tags here, and in the next little video, which should only be about 10 minutes, you'll see the uh, the final result. I'll uh, I'll apply everything uh, to a model and, uh, and render it out and uh, show you the final result, and we'll be done. So what I've done here is I've made a copy of my PSD, and I'm going to do the uh, spec. And uh, I'm just going through all my layers to desaturate all of them. Uh, the TV I'm going to leave. I'm actually going to brighten that up just because uh, I wanted to have like a, a nice bright TV glow. Um, same with things like uh, light bulbs, stuff like that. So I'm just going to use an action that uh, that I'm going to create here. That basically, I'll just have to hit a button to. <laughs> Do all this, these these couple of tiny things that uh, to desaturate it to speed things up a bit because there are enough layer, uh, layers that uh, it's a little tedious. So you can tell I'm just flying through it now. Desaturate everything. Um, there was a bit of a debate on. Um, black and white spec versus colored spec. Uh, I'm going to actually use a bit of both in this. Uh, mainly my, my rule of thumb is that really only uh, metal should have a colored spec. Everything else you can get away with is using black and white spec. Um, oh, don't get me wrong, there are some other materials that you can um, that could require a, a colored spec or you could use a colored spec. But generally I only use it on the on the metal and things like this TV screen. So I'm just going through and I'm adjusting the brightness, you know. Black is obviously uh, no spec, no shine, and white is as bright as uh, it will go. So things like scratches on, on metal, I generally make brighter because uh, they've been kind of burnished a bit, you know, like the, it's almost like a polish. Um, the paint on the signs will make it a little brighter too, because generally paint is uh, a little reflective. Uh, same with the cement, <coughs> since it was painted. Uh, otherwise, it would just be it would be super dull. Yeah, there I'm doing the TV specs. You can tell I'm uh, pushing that saturation level up high, so it'll give this really kind of cool glow. I could also use uh, an emissive texture for the TV screen and the lights too, um, which would add a, a, a glow to it in the, in the final model in, in the engine. 
So as you can tell, Dune Spec doesn't take very long if you've uh, organized your layers correctly and have uh, them separated the right way. You can pound out a spec pretty fast, you know, I'd say in about a half hour, depending on the object, you know. But even the most complicated of objects should only take you maybe tops in an hour. And here I'm just uh, adding a colored spec to that metal. Just a bit of a uh, bit of a different green. Um, sometimes you might want to try using the complementary color, um, but uh, we'll we'll stick with this. going through and tweaking things again. Uh, let's get another run through. Another pass. Giving the cement a bit more contrast. bright. Again, as you can tell, this is fairly easy. You're just using uh, Control U. Um, to use, uh, to tweak things once you get the saturation down. So I've got this, uh, this layer here. What I'll do is I'll just the, uh, turn on these stickers and tags and everything and uh, desaturate those and um, make the spec for them. Now I'll just drag this whole layer uh, folder uh, onto my original file and my spec is uh, is done. And I could save out these guys in their separate files, uh, the TGAs or PNGs, um, whatever file format the engine you are using um, uses. So there we go. I've, uh, I'm just going to Drag this guy over, put it in order. I'm actually uh, going to go into the base color here and uh, adjust it a bit more. It's a little too uh, yellowy green. Just the dirt. The dirt I noticed was uh, way too dark um, on the spec. Uh, it's got to show some of the metal through. It wouldn't be that crazy. So I'm just uh, deleting it down a bit. So there we have it. We have the uh, the spec map done, um, the normal map done, and the diffuse done. So we now have our three uh, our three maps. There are other maps that you can use, uh, like displacement maps and emissive maps. Um, but the next little video, I'll, uh, I'll finish this up and we'll see the final result of this uh, three-part tutorial, creating a subway entrance.